day 395, today your life changes. It's a uh, really good 11 minutes, 11 minutes, that's it, 11 minute video on on the day your life changes, all right? And Jim Rohn changed my life. I will say this, tip number one, Jim Rohn rescued me. Jim Rohn saved me. If Jim Rohn, you know, like, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, that Christmas movie. If Jim Rohn hadn't been born, Dr. V probably wouldn't be here, quite honestly. I was so near suicide. I was so lost. I didn't know what to do. I was so frustrated. I was so angry. And honestly, it took listening to Jim Rohn. Like, he's all I listen to. I can, I can sound like Jim Rohn. I can impersonate Jim Rohn. Uh, I, can, I have his inflections. I know all of his speeches by memory. And um, I did nothing but Jim Rohn for six fucking months, seriously. And once you start, and Jim Rohn's the, the godfather of all of these speakers, so it will eventually lead to the Les Brown and Tony Robbins and all these people. But I literally did nothing but Jim Rohn for six months. And, and it led me to Success Magazine with Darren Hardy um, and the free tapes. You know, and Success Magazine is the first magazine I bought, like a subscription dollars twelve dollars a year it was so cheap it and it came with an audio cd that you put in your car to listen to of these interviews and this is early you know, this would have been around 2006 or seven um and then my financial crisis started in 2008 i declared bankruptcy in 2010 and a half i, I mean i i really struggled for three years so 11 minutes and it's several different interviews on the day your life changes. Jim Rohn tells a story about how he was a young man. He was 25 years old. He'd been to college. He, he was working hard. He was married, just started his family. And one day he's at home and he gets a knock on the door. He opens it and there's this little Girl Scout. And I love this story because all you guys, you know, you, the joke is Girl Scouts are your drug dealers, right? <laughs> and they're out there right now. And, um, he said, there's cute little Girl Scouts. She's, she gives him the best pitch. Girl Scouts, great organization. And uh, we have these uh, wonderful cookies. And then she gives him the pitch. Will you buy? Would you, how many would you like to buy? And, um, and um, she says, uh, he, he says, well, um, he, of course, he'd love to buy great organizations, and it's only $2. He says he would love to buy. Problem is, he doesn't have $2. He doesn't have $2 to his name. And so he lies to her. He says, look, I've bought a bunch of cookies. And, and she goes, oh, thank you so much. And he closes the door. And the day his life changed, he said this, tip number two. He said, I do not want to live like this anymore. I want you to take that sentence, write it on a sticky note, write it on with lipstick on your mirror. <laughs> Michael Emmons, John Clark, write it with your lipstick on your mirror. I do not want to live like this anymore. Put that on your refrigerator when you're wanting to snack at night. Put that in your pantry when you're trying to reach for something. All of y'all, especially the ones who've had weight loss surgery, at some point sat back and said, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to stick myself with insulin anymore. I don't want to prick my finger anymore. I don't want to walk with aching knees anymore. I don't want to wear the CPAP machine anymore. Some of y'all only need to lose 20, 30 pounds, but you're here for the money stuff. And you go, he's right. I don't want to be stressed out right now because it's the end of the month. Your bills are, you, you, you know, comment if your bills are coming. Your bills are coming and you're getting stressed out. I don't want to live like this anymore. That's what Dr. V decided. I said, I don't want to live like this anymore. You know, no one knew the str struggles I was going through. You know, I had, I was lucky. I had a, I had a crew. And so even though my house had 17 
feet of water in it and the roof collapsed and um, i had a i had a crew so my crew came in and and remodeled everything drew everything. and even after that you know we moved back in and i still had like i couldn't breathe um, melissa's asthma was worse uh, kizzy was little and she was starting to have trouble breathing and uh, i had i had it tested for mold and they were like no there's no mold in here i was like i'm telling you there is mold in here and one day I just said, fuck it, I'm, I'm moving. So I moved out to my RV park and uh, it had a garage apartment, a two bedroom garage apartment. And I moved out to my RV park and guess what? All of our breathing problems went away. So I don't want to live like this anymore. I had to say that, you know what I mean? And you've got to do that. Where, whether it's your marriage, some of y'all are on the fence about your marriage. I know I keep going back to that and I pick on husbands, but you're not in this passionate relationship and you've got to make a decision. You have to, you know, it's Tracy Chapman. I've got to decide, leave tonight or live and die this way. I'm going to die this way, man. Right. I'm going to die broke. I'm going to die fat. <laughs> you know, there's always that fear. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to slip and die in the bathtub and they're going to see me naked. <laughs> um, and that's the crucial point. I don't want to live like this anymore. So Dr. Vong, how do you ha how does this work for you? I need to make you remember yesterday's talk. Have you ever read a book and inside your head you hear yourself reading? You hear this voice and you go, "Man, my voice sounds stupid." Or, "Yes, I'm following along nicely." Or you go, "Yes, that makes sense." And you think that voice is you but it's not you. There's actually two people inside your head, not two voices. Listen to me very closely. There's only one voice, the voice reading and then the voice noticing the reader. You are aware that you're reading. You're aware that you're talking to yourself. You are aware that you're having this thought. It's the awareness that's the real you. There aren't two voices. You're not schizophrenic. There's one voice reading, one voice thinking, oh, I look silly. I look silly dancing. I look silly standing up here. There's one person saying that. And then there's another person that is aware that you're saying that. It's the awareness that is the real you. Okay. So there's a person that goes, I'm lazy. I'm fat, I'm insecure, I am i don't have a degree, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good at math. And you have become so identified with that person, that voice, that you really believe that's you. But that's not you. Oh, I'm a chocoholic. I'm a carbaholic. I can't control myself around food, snacks, cookies. I'm lazy. I'm, you know, whatever it is, you become I so identified to that voice. You really believe that's you, but that's not you. The real you is the listener, the awareness. So how does your life change, Doctor B? Step number three. Tip number three. You literally, one, you say, I don't want to live this way anymore. I am done living this way. And then you stop talking. You stop talking. You stop thinking. You stop having an opinion. You stop watching the news. You stop debating with people. You just stop. And you go, I'm going to start learning. I'm going to start listening because I'm the listener. Do you have the aha? Anybody have an aha right now? Because here's the aha. A lot of y'all go, no, that's too hard. Like, no, my opinions matter. No, you know, I've got to, I've got to protest. I've got to, I'm, I'm a social advocate. I, I need to tear them another. I need to, I'm a good mom. I got to tell my kids. I got to tell my 25 year old how to raise the, my grandbaby. Is this an aha that I just gave you? No, you need to shut the fuck up. You need to not have an opinion. Why do you not have to have an opinion? 
because you're not the talker. You're the listener. You're the awareness. Uh Uh-huh. You're the awareness, man. So in order for you to change your life, you got to shut the fuck up. You got to quit having an opinion. You got to like quit talking about sports. You got to quit saying shit like they need to do this. We ought to be doing this. My team, that was a terrible play call. My team should have won. No, shut the fuck up. You're the listener. The real you is the listener. So how does your life change? Today, your life changes. Let me give you this funny quote. (laughs) One of the things, like sometimes, because you got to remember, I'm smart. I tested out. I'm a surgeon. I've taken every fucking exam you can take. I've aced everything my whole life. I've made fucking straight A's my whole life. I, I, I was disappointed if I got a 98 on a test, all right? So I'm smart. and Everyone always asks me for my opinion. And then I heard this quote one day. It said, it's better to keep your mouth shut and have everyone think that you're stupid than to open your mouth and prove them right. <laughs> What made Dr. V shut up? I heard someone say, it is better to keep your mouth shut and let them think that you're an idiot, that you're stupid, than to open your mouth and prove them right. And I was like, damn. The only option when you open your mouth is to be an idiot. Why? No, Dr. Vong, my opinion matters. I've researched it, Dr. Vong. You've researched it more than Dr. V has researched it? You've researched money sellers, resellers more than Dr. V has researched it? You've researched this company that buys the real estate for you more than my friend Darren? A public, a billion dollar company public? You've researched that company more than my, my friend Darren researched it? You've had dinner with the owner of that company. You you call, you know, you're good friends with the owner of that company. See, people say, I've researched it, Dr. Vaughn. See, you never have all the information. That's what makes surgery exciting yet scary. Surgeons have to make decisions with like fast with incomplete information. So we were always taught well we were always taught to have an opinion like we need to operate we need to do this we need to not operate we need to sit and watch we need another study right but dr vong then how if that's the case then how did you get better then how how can you not express yourself because basically what you do is you start listening you start learning you start listening to youtube you start whatever i'll give you an example you stop engaging with your co-workers at the at the water cooler oh my god they're doing this they're doing that like can you believe it they're gonna cut our hours they're 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 automating us they have a new emr they have a new survey we have to new learn this new software whatever the bitching is you need to stop that hey what do you think about it what do you think share what do you think diane about this new emr what do you think brenda about this or what do you, you have to say you know i don't i don't really know enough to say and shut up and walk away now what do you do? That won't that that's the first step. Now what you do is you go to your boss or your mentor and you go, "Hey um hey boss, let's just do it, boss. I know the company's going through a lot of changes right now. You're probably under a lot of pressure. Is there anything you need from me? How can I help you? I am all about listening right now." I have no opinion. You just tell me what to do, boss, because I am all about listening right now. And boom, your life will change. Boom, you will be smarter. Boom, you'll get the raise. Boom, you'll get the interview. Boom, you'll get like the promotion. Boom, you'll get it accepted. It happens like that. Now watch this. So Dr. Vong, I don't have a job. I'm retired. You see, everybody has fucking reasons, right? I don't have a mentor. You watch this. Watch this. Today, I gave you 11-minute video, Jim Rohn. You get your laptop open, you project it up to your TV screen, whatever you want to do. 
You might be walking, you have it in earbuds. I, I want you to literally do this. You literally go, Jim Rohn, I think you're amazing. Will you be my mentor? I am listening. You tell me what to do, I will listen. And you hit play. And you hit play. And it's weird. Jim Rome will say, hey, it's nice to meet you. And you go, he's talking to me. No, no, he's just a recording. He died back in 2006 or eight or whatever. He's, he's been dead 10, 15 years. No, no, he's talking to me, motherfucker. He said, hey, it's nice to meet you. You know, let me tell you about my story. And then you go, yeah, I want to hear about your story. I was born a poor uh, farm boy from Idaho. I grew up from nowhere. And this is what happened. And I fucked up. And I was broke. And I was embarrassed. And this Girl Scout comes and knocks on my door. And I said, I don't want to live this way anymore. And you go, holy shit. I don't want to be 250 pounds anymore. I don't want to be in this dead-end job anymore. I totally understand. I'm here. Keep going, Jim Rohn. Keep going. And he goes, I got a mentor. And he told me, you got to make goals. You got to set these goals. You got to do this. And I'm like, I've heard Dr. V talking about goals, but I thought it was silly. So I've never actually done it. Well, you know, my, my surgeons gave me a goal weight of 180, but I said, fuck that shit. That's still too heavy. Or I said, no way. I can't be 180. I'll look like a cancer patient. That's way too skinny. I'll be lucky if I only get down to 199. What the fuck am I? Why am I arguing with my surgeon? Do I trust my surgeon? Do I trust his experience? He told me to get down to 160. Dr. V told me, you're an idiot. You need to get down to 140. I said, shut up, motherfucker. And I said, I don't like you. You're always cussing. What's wrong with me, Jim Rohn? Jim Rohn goes, you just don't know. You just don't know what you don't know. Does that make sense? So what I want you to do is literally go back to yesterday's video. Literally go back to Lisa Nichols' video. Whatever video you love, Brene Brown, maybe you like the Marie Farleo and Brene Brown, and you go, all right, ladies, um, I'm, I'm here sitting with you. I am listening. Tell me how do I change my life, and I will do it. It will totally change how your mind operates, okay? That's a good tip. Is that a good tip? Can I have, can put a one in, in the comment section if you think that was a good tip? The Oprah talk, whatever you want. You say, Oprah, I want you to be my mentor. Get into this challenge. Today's the last day of the free day. I'm not even done yet. Karen is on every day, all right? This is going to be a short one. All right, so how does your life change? You shut the fuck up and you say, I'm listening. Okay? Jim Rohn says, all right, disgust. You've got to have a certain amount of disgust. I'm going to tell you, I was fucking disgusted. I was disgusted with my life. I, I was just disgusted. There were workers right next to me. and I'm, They're probably wondering, like, why the hell is this dude yelling at us? I'm going to move away. So I was literally disgusted with my life. I was like, dude, I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm a nice guy. I am a nice guy. Why is this happening to me? You know, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this hurricane, you know. And, and I had to say, man, I fucked this up. Disgust is really important. Jim Rohn talks about uh, she, he went to visit this company and there was this executive there that was rich and powerful and had a high income. And he said, how did you get here? And she goes, well, let me tell you a story. One day I was a young mother and I asked my husband for $10. And he looks at me and he says, what for? And she said, at that moment, I decided I will never ask that motherfucker for for money again you gotta get disgusted man you gotta get disgusted very powerful emotion next tip he says desire 
He says, you got to have a desire. Look around at your friends and your family. Look around and they're talking about how you look great, how you lost weight. You're in this MLM. You're slinging dildos. You're selling jewelry. You're selling Mary Kay. You signed up for resellers and you're like, hey, man, you can sign up and make 752 and I'll make 100 bucks with Dr. V's plus one. And they're like skeptical. They, you have to understand they don't have the desire to change. Jim Rohn says desire. Dr. V's tip will tell you this. So subset A under this tip. It's not enough to have desire. Desire is not actionable is my step. You can desire all you want, but if you, unless you go out and do something about it, desire will not matter. Give me an amen right here. Watch this. How many fucking years did y'all want to lose weight? How many years did you desire a better life, a desire a better health? You wanted it. You wanted to lose weight. You wanted to be off your medicines. You wanted more energy. You wanted more passion. You wanted a better job. And you didn't fucking do anything about it. Desire is not enough. Am I right? Y'all all wanted desire. Y'all all wanted a better life. Y'all all are here because you want a better life. And some of y'all, this will be the last time you see me live until I open the challenge again. Because you don't want it bad enough. Dr. Vaughn, I don't like you. You're not like the other people. That's not a way to talk to a potential customer, Dr. V. The fuck yes it is. Maritza signed up. How do you know, Dr. Vaughn? Because I am the one who admits you into the challenge group. I know Maritza just signed up. Does that make sense? You don't have the desire. It's not enough. It's not enough. Which takes me to the last Jim Rohn tip, which will change your life today. He says, resolve. Resolve. Oh, I like this. Dina, you're totally right. A toe in the water is not being washed in amazing grace. You've got to go all in. That is right. Amazing grace. That's how I see. I, I cry even saying the fucking words. Glenn Wassimer, he'll be happy to know. I was touched by grace, man. I can't think of the amazing grace without crying. I was a wretch. Saved a wretch like me. Desire. And Dina is right. You got to go in. You got to get to a point where you feel this. When I say amazing grace, you got to feel like, man, I was blessed. I was touched. I was saved. I was almost there, man. I almost ended it all. And now look at me. It was grace that saved me. Jim Rohn says, you've got to have resolve. What's resolve? He goes around and he talks to these, these um, little kids and he asks them, what's the definition of resolve? Some of them, one of them gave one tip, one of them gave another tip, another definition. This one little girl raises her hand in the back and she says, Mr. Rohn, I think I know what resolve means. He says, what? And she goes, resolve means promising yourself that you will never give up. And he goes, that's it. Webster's Dictionary, watch out. Resolve means promising yourself you're never going to give up. I'm never going to give up on myself. I am never going to give up on my dreams. I am never going to quit. I am never giving up. That's how your life changes. Let me tell you. Elevator tip. Who wants the best fucking elevator tip? Let's do this. Grace just touched me again. I was just downloaded this most amazing elevator tip. Who wants it? 
All right. So here it is. I have to dry my eyes. <laughs> Let's go with this elevator tip, right? Let's go. Elevator tip is this. When you shut the fuck up, when you give up your ego, remember your ego or your opinions, when you give up your thoughts, when you give up your arguments, when you give up your excuses, when you give up your reasons, when you give up your preferences, when you give up your likes, when you give up your dislikes, when you quit saying shit like, I don't like to garden, I'm not good at gardening, I don't like smoothies, it's a texture scale, it's a texture thing, you know, I can't do this, I'm not smart enough. I'm, when you give up these thoughts, you shut the fuck up, because you realize all you are is the listener. Here's the elevator tip. You find out all you're left up with once you shut up. All you have is your resolve. Ooh! No, oh. oh, that was a fucking take it home, Dr. V. Who understands what I'm saying? Once you are quiet, once you are quiet, you realize all you have is your resolve. I am going to do this or die. I am going to get this promotion or die. I'm going to get, I'm going to, you know, make millions or die. All you have left is your resolve. And you and it shines as fucking light. And it's so bright. And you say, I got it's me and my dreams. It's me and my dreams. It's me getting to goal weight. It's me getting to a size four. It's me having ten thousand dollars in the bank, a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, or passive income. It's just me and my dreams. That's the day your life changes. When you know you won't give up. I love you guys very much. Have an amazing day. I hope you will sign up. Weightlosschallenge.com. Get more of this every single day. I'm live every single day to give you a kick in the pants. Plus, you get special speakers. Chris Noggle is on tonight. Don't miss him. Love you guys. Be amazing. Bye.